Kathy Ireland. Kathy Ireland. Kathy Ireland. She is a model, an activist, a trailblazing CEO. Tonight, supermodel turned mogul Kathy Ireland. She's created a business empire, a billion dollar brand. Happily married, too. How does she do it? She skyrocketed to fame, modeling at 16. Trusted influencer and CEO. I'm Kathy Ireland, CEO, Kathy Ireland Worldwide. It's a blessing to be exposed to needs that are bigger than me and to mm. opportunities that are bigger than me. It is inarguable. When we look at the sonogram, we see this human being. We see the movement. We see the baby sucking its thumb. If it is not alive, what is it? I dove into the medical books. I dove into the scientific research. What I learned is at the moment of conception, a new life comes into being. The DNA, the genetic blueprint is there. The sex is determined. The blood type is determined. The unique set of fingerprints is there. I picked up the phone. I called Planned Parenthood. Help me out here. Give me your best arguments. And the best arguments were, well, if you get it, it's just a clump of cells. I went from being a pro-choice advocate to someone who recognizes that abortion is not a women's rights issue. It's a human rights crisis. We of all people are the ones who need to stand up and say, no, that's not okay. We're just getting started. Ireland, I am so excited to sit down with you. Oh, well, thank you, Lila. It's an honor to be with you. We're, we get to honor you tonight for your incredible pro-life leadership. And you've been an icon for decades now for the world, one of the most well-known faces now as a business leader, a tremendous business leader and inspiration to many women. What's that been like to have so much success for so many decades? Well, thank you, Lila, so much. Um, it's it's a journey, and uh, a lot of uh, a lot of failures along the way. You know, learning the hard way. Uh, my education finished when I barely finished high school, but I look at failure as education. So in that respect, I am very well educated. Yet I'm grateful for every lesson. I'm a slow learner, and I have to say I have so much respect for you, Lila, because in your young tender years you have I mean God has worked through you to save countless lives and that is just there I mean what's more important than that that is just amazing so thank you for that I'm I'm a very slow learner um, and I'm so God is very patient with me I'm very grateful for that you have this incredible platform I mean truly one of the most recognizable people in the world and you chose to use it for one of the most controversial causes in the day where you made many enemies. What was the process in your you know, heart to choose? You made that choice to speak out for life. What was that, for one of the first times you spoke out, what was that like? You know, well, I, I, I growing up, um, I, I believed in God, but I didn't know God. And I didn't know that I didn't know him. So I didn't, I didn't know what he, what he says on abortion, on life. There's so much there. I didn't know any of that. And I identified as a pro-choice Christian, which, I mean, what, is, what even is that? It's an oxymoron. And it was science that led me to understand that life begins at the moment of conception. And it, it is a human being from the moment of conception. And once you know that, uh, I, I didn't want to be pro-life. It wasn't part of my plan or anything. But once you have the the facts in front of you, it would be many, many years later where I would see, oh my goodness, this is what the Lord says about life, just confirming all of it. Yet, what was that like for me? I think once you know the truth and you know a human being's life is in danger, nothing else matters. I mean, if somebody doesn't like you, oh, well, you, you don't get invited to whatever. <laughs> it's just not relevant. It just, it, it just isn't. If we saw someone murdering uh, a three-year-old on the street, we would intervene. And when you recognize that this is a human being we're talking about, you do whatever you can to stop it. There are so many people in Hollywood 
in business, in the modeling world, you know, places that you have been so successful in that are extremely hostile to the pro-life cause. And there are too few people standing up for life in those spaces. What has the kind of pushback been like for you in your experience as you've advocated against Proposition 1 and you've gotten involved politically in speaking out at press conference publicly for life? What has that looked like from maybe past business uh, relationships you've had or friends that you've had in the industry? There's been a lot of pushback from it, yet it is so irrelevant when we're talking about a human life. Uh, years ago, uh, there was a show uh, Bill Maher had, uh, Politically Incorrect. I was invited to go on the show. It was a new mom. I mean, life is so busy and full, especially when you have kids. So you got to be very mindful of every moment. I said, I don't want to go and talk about fluff, but if we can talk about something meaningful. Life, okay, then I'll go. And had business colleagues uh, say, just don't even touch the subject. This will kill your career. And it's like, no, I, I mean, of course I'm going to, if I have an opportunity to speak about life, of course I'm going to take, I don't care if the career is killed. If we're talking about a baby being killed. And one of my business partners, he said, I know you've made up your mind. You have to know that you have my complete support. If, uh, if, you know, our business goes down the toilet, so be it. We'll start over. If one woman watching cancels her appointment, it is so worth it. And that's, I mean, and that it, it's trust the Lord will provide. It's going to work out. We do what we're supposed to do and we fight the good fight however we're able to. How awesome to have a business partner that was willing to support you in that moment, despite all those that couldn't or wouldn't. Right. That's a, that's a powerful thing. What's your advice to other people who are in business or in entertainment who maybe are personally pro-life, but they haven't found the courage to speak yet? to find the courage and to recognize that I, I think people fear that they're going to alienate themselves, they're going to hurt women. And it's so important to dig deeply and to get your answers. People are hearing sound bites, they're hearing propaganda in the media. And Planned Parenthood is a powerful marketing machine and it's a big money maker. And it's so important to ask the questions, get the answers. I think that abortion can be the most convenient choice, oftentimes for boyfriends, for families, for doctors. A 15-minute abortion, 1800 bucks, versus being with a woman nine months and babies can come at inconvenient times. It can be uh, more liberating for society, but for women most frequently, uh, they they carry this alone, and many women who have had abortions they refer to uh, the later years in life, even decades later, as the aftermath. And even for women who know that God forgives them, it can be hard to forgive themselves. I was at a women's retreat many years ago in Bakersfield, California, in a football stadium amazing women were speaking. One woman got up and spoke. She said, I wasn't planning on speaking on this, but I'm feeling like there are women who are hurting here. I mean, it's estimated one in four women have had an abortion. She said, I, I, I just want to pray for you. And if you just want to come down to the field, uh, I, I will pray for you. And just look, if you haven't told your boyfriend, your family, and this isn't the time to, to do it, just sit in your seat. God knows it's okay. And the women started trickling down to the field. And soon it was a flood and the stadiums were practically empty. The football field was filled with women who were wailing and crying and weeping. And it is so important for us to recognize that this is not the answer for women. I'm someone like you who supports the rights of women but when we're talking about abortion it's not a women's rights issue it's a human rights crisis and it's so important for women to know that there is nothing too big for god to forgive we just he paid it all at the cross and we just come to him in repentance and he remembers it no more as far as the east is from the west and he makes everything new and it's trusting in him and what what he did for us. So that's um, that's 
my heart for women in this. It breaks my heart to see so many people led astray or living in times of deception that is escalating beyond anything I've ever experienced. And so this generation is really needs to be equipped. So thank you, Lila, to you and to live action because you cut right through all the fluff and all the lies and the propaganda with truth and love. And that's what people need. They need to hear the truth. And once you know the truth, it's pretty hard to unknow it. Thank you, Kathy. Thank you. Last question for you. You're a Californian. You're still here. I'm here, still in California. One of the things you were fighting against, we were fighting together, is Proposition 1, enshrining abortion through all nine months of pregnancy on babies up until the moment of birth into our state constitution. What should we do? What's your encouragement, especially to those in states as dark as ours, in this fight for life? I'm a seventh generation Californian. I love this state. I mean, I, I know our ancestors traveled across the country uh, during the days of the gold rush. They hit the Sierra Nevadas, and instead of stopping, they just kept going. You know, Californians are tough people. Yet what has become of this state is heartbreaking. It's been bad. It's gotten worse. When I was in public high school, in Santa Barbara, California, 40 years ago, Planned Parenthood came to class to tell us we could get abortions and our parents would never need to know. That evil has escalated. And uh, Prop AB 2223, which not only advocates for abortion up to the time of birth, 28 days after, so it is evil. Our governor is advocating for California to be a sanctuary state for abortion and telling women from other states, come here and have your abortion here. This is really tough. Our son and his wife uh, moved because they didn't want their tax dollars to go to abortion. And it this is causing us to make some really difficult decisions. There's, uh, you got to be in the battle because it doesn't end in California. It's tragically spreading across the country and throughout the world. And uh, the World Health Organization tells us that 125,000 babies are killed by abortion every single day. So this is a battle we all must be engaged with. And as dark as this state can be, the light can shine brighter. So we've got to just fight through. Live action is so needed in this state. So thank you. And I just encourage you to keep up the good fight and the good work. Thank you for helping me with my neighbor on the board of Planned Parenthood with your awesome videos. You can't argue with that. It's just you cut right to the truth and deliver it so powerfully. So thank you. Well, we are in this together, and I'm so grateful. We are all so grateful and inspired by your voice, by your conviction, by your clarity. Thank you for your leadership, Kathy. Thank you, Lila. God bless you.